Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. It's a Hero Quest update sort of a day. To be honest, I'm a bit behind the curve with this one. I've had a busy few days and just haven't had the chance to sit down, dive into the research and put my thoughts together. As such, I may be telling you stuff you already know by now, but I do like hearing myself talk, so... It looks like we have another new hero on the way. Back on June the 7th, Zargon posted on Twitter to say he was going to the north on important business to wake an ancient terror and would return in a few days. This was obviously a little tease that we can expect an official update on the Frozen Horror expansion very soon. Interesting news, but as I had already talked a lot about that forthcoming expansion on the channel, I didn't think this one tweet was worth reporting on. I'll save that for when they make some kind of announcement. However, I made a mental note to come back and read the comments under the tweet. It takes a bit of mental preparation to dive into Twitter like that, but Zargon has a habit of putting little snippets of information in his responses to people's questions, so I do like to read through everything. Anyway, I sort of got sidetracked, but I finally got around to it, and I noticed a few people mentioning the rogue heir of Elethorn. My spidey senses immediately started tingling, because that's the sort of thing that lets you know you've overlooked a leak somewhere. Sure enough, a few days back a number of retailers listed a new product, a character pack called the Rogue Heir of Elethorn. It was very similar to the Guardian Knight pack, which immediately raised some alarms, but I'll get to that. From the listings, we could see the pack would contain two hero miniatures, male and female variants of an elf rogue, along with some skill and item cards. However, shortly afterwards there was a great purge, and all the retailers that had listed it pulled down their pages, and none of the links to those products work anymore. But the internet is the internet. Once you've let the genie out of the bottle, it's almost impossible to stuff it back in, so it's still very easy to find a product listing, which means we can take a closer look at this new expansion. The following information was grabbed from the Meeple Mart listing. It didn't include a price or an exact release date, although I do have some more information on that in a moment, but we do get a description and full contents list, plus two pictures. For contents in this expansion, you are getting two miniatures and 12 cards. The cards are two hero cards, six skills, two dagger items, and two bandolier items. As with the Guardian Knight pack, it appears they have doubled up on all of the cards, meaning 12 new cards isn't quite as exciting as it first seems. Those six skill cards will actually be two identical sets of three skills, the two hero cards will cover the male and female versions of the character, and you are getting doubles of this character's two starting items as well. Speaking of which, a dagger is already an item in Hero Quest. It's the starting weapon for a wizard, granting no real benefit in close combat, but it can be discarded to make a single ranged attack. Unless the rogue's dagger is different, that means this hero isn't going to be much cop in a fight. I suspect the bandolier provides some kind of buff, my assumption being the bandolier allows for unlimited use of the dagger as a throwing weapon. This assumption seems to be backed up by the character description from Meeple Mart, which reads, A nimble skirmisher who is deadly with small blades, but you lack the ability to use metal armour and shields. Equipped with your trusty bandolier, you are always prepared for danger. Important feature to highlight, the rogue can perform range attacks, which makes it a desired character to add to the collection. Fair enough, being able to make ranged attacks from the get-go but making them weak dagger attacks seems to be a fair trade, especially as the rogue won't be able to use most armour either. Unfortunately, in the only image of the cards I could find, the cards aren't readable, so I can't say right now what the rogue's new skills are, but we are definitely seeing a pattern here. Each new hero for the game so far has had a set of three skills, and that includes the new heroes created during the crowdfunding campaign. As this new character is a rogue, I think we can expect to see skills relating to sneaking and backstabbing. Hopefully at least one skill to help avoid danger, as the rogue is going to really struggle to find defensive items they can use. But, I guess the question is, do these skills make the new characters more interesting than the original Hero Quest team? And even more importantly, do they make them better choices? I don't know really. The Guardian Knight seemed like a decent replacement for the Barbarian. You lose some initial hitting power, but you can still buff your attacks, you get some useful skills and you aren't slowed by armour, but I actually kind of feel like Hero Quest isn't the best game for a tank character. Having all those narrow corridors and doorways with one beast mode knight blocking the way, eh, seems like a recipe for a drawn out slugfest. But I guess that's besides the point. Who would you drop from the classic lineup to take the rogue instead? 
the dwarf has always felt like a useful addition to the team. So, as long as the rogue doesn't have any skills relating to disarming traps, that probably isn't going to be a good trade. While the wizard and elf have spells that you probably don't really want to leave home without. I certainly wouldn't want to take out a hard hitter like the barbarian to swap in a rogue either. I guess giving the new heroes skill sets might make them more exciting to play. Doing the big bonk with the barbarian every turn can get a little bit old after a while but it doesn't necessarily make them better choices for a well-balanced team. Of course, if Hasbro keep releasing heroes like this, there will probably come a time when there are some characters that are considered direct upgrades from the originals, and then it will be time for the OGs to hang up their boots and spend their final days in the tavern regaling travellers of their past glories. Or then again, maybe Hasbro could release a set of skill cards for the Dwarf and the Barbarian. You can sometimes teach an old dog new tricks. And of course, Having more options is never a bad thing, even if it feels a little bit like these heroes are bonus characters rather than ones you are supposed to integrate into your proper campaign. If nothing else, it does give Zargon players some inspiration for creating themed adventures using a specific configuration of heroes, and if you really want to push players out of their comfort zones, there is always blind character selection. But I think I'm getting sidetracked here, and there are a few more things I want to say about this new rogue pack. While Meeple Mart didn't have a price listed, I have found pricing information elsewhere. It seems we are looking at a similar price point as the Guardian Knight, as I have seen the Rogue listed with a recommended retail price of $21.95 in Canada and $16.99 in the UK. And now the small matter of availability. Since the Guardian Knight fiasco, I have often seen people worrying about whether they will be able to get HeroQuest expansions. Even when it comes to big releases like Frozen Horror, people are worrying about getting in day one pre-orders in case they miss out. As far as I'm concerned, this isn't a concern. The Guardian Knight was a retail special, a limited edition product offered as an incentive for retailers to take a certain amount of stock for the initial retail release of the game. A kind of safety net to ensure enough stores had the game on the shelves. This shouldn't be the case for subsequent releases and won't be the case for the Rogue Air, even though the product seems so similar to the Guardian Knight. Apparently there has already been official word from Avalon Hill that there will be much more stock of this expansion. That information came from YouTuber Amalgamash, who covers a lot of HeroQuest over on his channel, so that's worth checking out. Additionally, a product listing on Bliss Distribution in the UK shows that these packs are being distributed in retailer cases of 24, so stores will be able to order in whole cases rather than having a few boxes to sell. Oh, and as for a release date, I've seen October on some sites and November on others, with November seeming like the most likely drop for me. I think I will probably set aside some pennies for then. But I think that's probably it from me for now. I've probably forgotten to mention something, but I've got to dash. If you enjoyed this video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye.